Thanks, team. How are you? I feel very blessed that I got I, I won over the sunshine. It's not often that you uh, that you get to say you win over English sunshine. So thanks for being here. Thank you. I just need to probably plug that in. Um, uh, you guys are, prob sounds like you guys are all at different levels and up to different things. Can I just get a sense of who's where because it'll help me shape where we come from today. Um, how many of you are currently uh, working? You're currently employed. Uh, you got, got, got a job. Okay, great. So, okay, so, okay, how many of you are self-employed? So you've got a job for yourself. Okay, a bunch of you. How many of you are running your own, running a business? You've got a team working with you? Okay, a couple. How many of you are any of the above plus investing in property or trading, doing something else? Like you're kind of doing the two together. Okay, good. So we've got a bit of a mix of everything. Um, and so I'm just interested to know what it was about tonight that had you want to come and hear this particular piece, do you know? Because it's not, speaking is not necessarily a strategy that gets a, uh, um, uh, that's equivalent with escaping the rat race for most people. I mean, certainly it's what's done it for me, um, but it's not something that's front of mind. So uh, for many of us, we kind of see something, we go, oh yeah, I'll go to that, click, pay the money, and then we don't think about it again until we turn up on the night. So what I'd like for us all to do is just take a moment to get present to what you want to get out of today. And I'd like to hear it from you as well, because then I can, hey, I can throw the slides out the window if they're not right and we can just do it on the flip chart. I want to give you guys whatever you came for today. You know, we've got a small intimate group. I'm not used to, you know, I haven't, it's been a long time since I've had a small intimate group like this. So, um, uh, so why not make the most of it and give you exactly what you want? So take say a minute with a buddy. Let's start with a buddy. So if you turn just to the person next to you, like in a little group of two or, or three, and I'd like you to share why. Why are you here to learn about presentations, increasing your impact, leadership? What is it about that that had you go, yep, I'm not going to have a gin and tonic in the park. I'm going to come and do this. Everyone's like, yeah, I really should have done that. Pimps, do both. That's happening afterwards, right? Russell Square, I'm there. All right, so just take a minute to share with uh, with a buddy and then we'll check in. Off you go. Yes, I'm good. <laughs> I've not, no, no. Someone told me the other day Facebook is for old people. I thought, man, I'm not even 40 yet. Yeah, right? I can't handle any more social platforms. <laughs> Switch over the other way. Make sure you've both had a chance to share. Oh, you all went very quiet, so maybe the sharing's finished. <laughs> all right, if I could have your attention back at the front of the room, that would be great. I want to hear from a couple of you. I want to hear what it was that you had you say, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in giving up my PIMS for that. What is it? Who'd like to share? Let me hear from a couple of you, because then I can really shape where we're going. Yeah. So I, I was standing here last month doing, doing exactly that. And, yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm big on getting yourself educated, learning new things. And I think this is one of the things you don't actually proactively go out and learn. You don't learn to say, OK, I'm going to go and learn about speaking or making an impact. So that, that for me was really intriguing about coming here and seeing these people. Great. So it's something you're, you're doing it already, yeah. right? Awesome. And you're running the property mentoring. Right. and Right. Great. Excellent. Okay, cool. Got it. You're going to love it. Excellent. Yes, sir. Joe, hello. Again. Hey, good to see you. So as a former student of Joanne's, I just want to come say hello. Yay! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> good to see you again, Grant. Who else? Who else? Let's hear what else you've got. Yes, my. Oh, you're students with my student. Who's yeah, that? John Lee. Oh, wow. There you go. Do you know, so do any of you guys know John Lee? Yeah. 
Okay, cool. I had this really random moment where I was um, running as my one day uh, presentation secrets, a, tra a training at the Millennium Gloucester in uh, in London here. And a bunch of my a bunch of my clients came in and said, "Do you know John Lee's running his speaker training downstairs?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh my god!" So John Lee came along to my my intensive, my three day intensive, which is now a four day intensive because I'm a mum and can't do the long days anymore. Um, back in 2008, the very first one that I did over here. And so to get to the point where someone that you taught is now teaching the thing and doing amazingly with it. It's like, it's incredibly humbling. So I'm really glad you're here. That's cool. And you're, you're a coach, right? Yeah. yeah, awesome. Is anyone else doing coaching or mentoring or consulting or anything that falls into that kind of category? Helping professionals? Okay, cool. Are any of you like accountants, lawyers, those, those like service professionals of any sort? One or a couple? Okay, yeah, cool. cool. That's what you escaped, yes. <laughs> Woohoo, she says, hooray. Awesome, that's good, that's good. That gives me a sense of things. What else, anything different? Anything different? Yes, yes. Um, I mean, I actually really enjoy speaking. I've had mm. to do it as part of the day job, so with my new What's your day job? I'm in PR and marketing. Ah, fab, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so now that I'm setting up my own business, I'm looking forward to talking about something I actually want to talk about. Yes. So <laughs> it's like learning the skills and how do you get started on that path of becoming, something you think, so obvious. Why don't I do that? But how do you actually get started? How do you get started on the path? Got it. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. One more out the back. Yes. Yeah, so I went once for your one-day event, and I was the leather lady. I Yeah, I remember. I remember the leather lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Create the academy. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Great. That's really good. Thank you, team. It gives me an idea of where we are and what you guys are up to. Um, for me, there is no faster way to go from employment or job or what have you into business than speaking. Using speaking as an R&D tool, right? That's it's a thing that most of us don't even think about when we think of public speaking. We think public speaking is a thing that we do when we get an invitation to speak somewhere. Right? It's as simple as that. And what will I talk about is the first thing that we ask ourselves. What will I teach them? And if you spend any time with me, you'll understand that that is the last thing that you should be thinking about when you're thinking of putting together a presentation. It's the best research and development tool you'll ever have. If you want to research whether or not something's going to fly as a business, go out. How long does it take you to put together a, like an hour long presentation? I've got a process that helps you put it together in under an hour, right? Test the content. Test whether people like hearing you talk about that. If it's, if, there's, if it's got legs, then maybe, just maybe, it's worth building the website. Maybe it's worth buying the business name. Maybe all of those. Do you see what I mean? If they're, if they're coming up to you afterwards with lots of questions and they're nodding in the right places, yes, it's worth doing. If not, all you wasted was a couple of hours of prep time, the hour of delivery, and you got a bit more confidence because you delivered a great talk. Do you guys get what I'm talking about? It's such, a, like people say, oh, first thing you need to do is write a book. Do you know how long it took me to write my book? <laughs> Four years. And even then I had to have the help of an editor to get it done, right? Um, but the content of that book was so easy after I'd taught it about eight, the seminar 18 times, it was really easy to put it into a book. Do you guys get the idea? Mm -hmm. So I think there is, it is the best research and development tool out because you get instant feedback and people you will, know, will tell you. Many of you have created great results in whatever it is that you do. You know, Sharon, I bet you're an awesome PR person. Maybe there, you, know, you can teach that thing or if you've invested in property, you can teach that thing. There's things that you know how to do so easily you don't even rate them that people would pay to hear from you about. <laughs> now, by the way, speaking is just self-employment unless you have IP that you package up and create products and stuff out of. So we're going to talk about a few of these different bits and pieces throughout the course of the day. Um, I'll see how much I can squeeze in, but we've only got like an hour and a half together. If you like where we're going, I'm going to invite some of you to come and join me at my one day training that the guys have um, already mentioned uh, earlier, which I'd love to, love to have you along. But I want to give you a flavor of it today so you can get a sense of, huh, I wonder if that's the path for me. Would that be the thing that would help me kind of, you know, take that next step? So there's this lovely quote from someone we all love in the UK, <laughs> Monsieur Brasson, there is no greater thing you can do with your life or your work than follow your passions in a way that serves the world and you. And I think this is really important 
because in my experience, people who shift into running their own business fall into one of two camps. Either they get all excited about going out and serving the world and they're broke, <laughs> or they get all excited about going out and serving themselves and you know they might make some good money, but it's not really a, nah, you know, we don't like them that much. So we want to we want to we want to recognize like there are lots of great companies that have that beautiful blend of both, which is the kind of stand that you guys want to be taking. Actually, I see some of you guys um, taking photos and things. Please feel free to do that. I forgot to say, you can't even speak without sharing your social handles and things these days. Sorry, I'm not on Snapchat, but on Twitter I'm Joanna Martin, and Facebook my fan page is Dr. Joanna Martin. Little incentive to get connected with me. If you go and like me on Facebook and do a post to my page about what you learned tonight. I'll choose the most inspiring learning and I'll send you a prize. What prize will I send you? Okay, so I've got my book, The Presentation Profits Blueprint, right? Um, I created a 30-day blueprint in action program, which is how you can add new, uh, a new income stream to your business or if you're in employment, you could start and earn money from speaking within 30 days if you follow that little recipe. I usually sell it for 697 pounds. Favorite post to my Facebook page at the end of tonight, I'll send it to you. Does that sound okay? Does that incentivize you to go like and share what you're learning with me? That'd be good. Um, cool. So, uh, so uh, now you can continue taking your photos and learning and sharing. Um, so here's the thing. Um, Chris already asked you this, actually. We're like in tune. What stopped you from making the next step in your career development? I'd like each of you to touch base on that. We heard from a couple of people earlier, but I want you to share on it because I want to get a sense of what's the thing that's holding you. Because some of you are moving. So it's like, what's preventing, what's stopping the acceleration? Um, you know, we heard time, we heard finance. What do you feel like that is? Because again, it gives me some more insight into how to position today. So please turn to your buddy and share what it is for you. What's holding you at your current trajectory? What's stopping you from going, bam, off you go. Thanks, Mrs. Moo. Bam! <laughs> That's incredible. You're gonna have to show me that now. Make sure you've both had a chance to share. All right, lovely. If you could finish up those conversations and come back to the big group. Thank you. Let me hear some of your, uh, let me hear some of the things. So we've already heard time. I totally get it. Um, totally get the time thing. Interesting thing is the overwhelm never goes away no matter how many, you know, zeros you have at your income and how many. I thought there'd be this magical number of staff that I'd get to where I would finally have enough staff that I would never get overwhelmed. It still happens. It's just different things. You get overwhelmed because someone resigns or you get overwhelmed because you realize you're three months later and you're next hire or all sorts of things, right? It never goes away. I don't think it's like the best we can do as entrepreneurs is get really great at always up leveling our ability to handle stuff you know so we've heard about time we heard about finance was there any anything else that came up as you were chatting just there yeah 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 what's your name uh, afrin. afrin nice to meet you uh, taking the first step first step first step is the hardest right it's totally the hardest because you can be comfortable comfortable where you are not really <laughs> are you uncomfortably comfortable where you are does it feel, you, you hate it, but it's safe? Would that be a fair way of putting it? Yes, I'm, a part of me loves it. Yeah, yeah. A part of me hates it. When I was just telling you, like, my boss is the worst. 
<laughs> right, <laughs> right, totally. Yeah. But that first step is hard. Who can relate to that? Yeah. Who can relate? I can totally relate to that, right? I can totally relate to that. Um, anything else? Anything else that came up in your conversations that we haven't heard? Confidence. Uh, confidence. Okay, great. Yeah, great. Tell me about that. Well, it's the confidence, like the first step to have put your faith in doing it and having the confidence to actually sort of jump off the top board. And yeah. Do what you, you want to do. Yeah, totally. And you, and you do everything around, everything possible rather than jump off the top board because of the confidence. Yeah, don't you know? Like you check your emails really thoroughly and all of those sorts of things rather than take that first step. Wash, yes. Very clean washing, very healthy dog. Really haven't made that first call yet. Yeah, I can totally get that. I can totally get that. Do you know, it's interesting because a lot of people look at me and look at my, hear my kind of career journey and go, wow, that's bold, that's courageous. Because the abridged version goes, Medical student to doctor, left, uh, left doctoring to go to drama school. Left drama school to start a coaching business and within two years was speaking to audiences of 3,000 at a time and go, whoa, courageous. If I kind of let you in on the secret behind of it, I am the biggest scaredy cat in the whole wide world. So actually the truth of it is I knew I wanted to be an actor when I was still at school. But it took me a whole medical degree <laughs> to get the confidence to go to my first audition because it was the thing I really wanted to do. Do you know what I mean? It took me, so how many years is that? Seven, eight, eight years of, I started the, read, read the book The Artist's Way. Has anyone read that book? If you've not, read it. It's a, it will actually do it. It's a course, a course in a book. A really great course for getting in touch with your creativity, your true self, getting you in flow. Um, and developing, developing what I call the, the ability to take mini risks. Because actually, the day when I said to my partner, I'm going to audition for drama school, I'm not going to be a doctor anymore, it was the next logical, tiny little step like taking the dogs for a walk. It, I didn't leap off anything at any time. Does that, do you know what? The book, um, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Great book. But there is one chapter I hate, and it's Burn Your Bridges chapter. Do you remember that one? Now, for, the, for, you, for you guys, it's something I've noticed, like, because I've mentored a lot of really successful women um, and a lot of really successful men. You know, most of the people I do, I was doing a VIP day here with a client just before we came in today. And, um, and uh, you know, they, uh, seven and a half grand, come and I'll sort out your business for the day. So obviously people are doing okay to, to, um, to, uh, to invest in something like that. And, um, but one of the things I've noticed, difference between uh, a, lot, a lot of men and a lot of women, I'm not saying it's a gender thing, but something I've noticed as a gen general theme, men work really well when the bridges are burned because you just have to. It's like the, you know, you roll up your sleeves and you hustle and you make shit happen if, if the push comes to the shove. Women freak out. We, we need the safety, like it's, if you kind of look at 180,000 years of genetic programming of survival, right? The genetic programming of the masculine DNA is we'll go kill the mammoth and bring it back, right? <laughs> we'll do that. And for, for women, it's I'll keep everything safe here until, until the mammoth comes. <laughs> and what we're dealing with now here, especially for women, like it's really only been the last, what, 60 years? We've even had space in the world of commerce, right? Um, we're dealing with this really deep programming. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, look, I am not a bridge burner, right? I'm not a bridge burner. Yes, I, you know, I had a big wake up call when I was a doctor. One of my favorite patients died. And that when I tell, tell my story about, um, about the moment when the decision was made, it was the day that one of my favorite patients passed away. And I thought, my God, that could be me. Do you know what I mean? That could be me. She was only about six years older than I was then. She's younger than I am now. And she had breast cancer and passed away. She had two young girls and it just really hit me, do you know? And it was a real wake up call. And we all have those wake up calls that give us the quick, you know, the swift boot up the bum. And that was it for me. And that's when I decided to go to drama school. But it was eight years of building up the courage for that to be an easy step. So one of the first things that I would say to you guys today, no matter where you are on that spectrum of doing your own thing, is don't feel like you've got to burn your bridges. 
as I say, I would, I would go into debate with Napoleon Hill on that could I, if I had the opportunity. Um, I don't think it's necessary. And I think that if we get really great, and Tim Ferriss said it in his book, get really great at kind of um, freeing up your time inside of what you're doing to test stuff. And that's why I love speaking, because it's the fastest way to test your ideas. Do you, do you get what I mean? If you, can, if you can get some smiles and some nods and a round of applause on something, even better get a sale on something and it's worth building that thing. Otherwise, who cares what color the website is? Because no one cared when you spoke about it. Do you know what I mean? Don't go through the heartache. Um, and I have to say then when I you know, went to drama school, thought that was a thing, but turned out it wasn't that. I went to my first personal development seminar and I was sitting there looking up at this guy on stage and I thought, oh, maybe that's the thing. You know, he was up there telling stories and, you know, there was this kind of performance element to it, I suppose. But he was helping people, which was kind of where the doctoring piece came in. So I saw this union of the things that I felt deeply passionate about. But I didn't even know there was this industry out there of adult education. I seriously thought education finished when you left university. Did anyone else kind of think that? Yeah, but there's like, there's this whole industry out there of helping people who want to be better at stuff, whatever that might be, business, life, you know, spirituality, health, all of that kind of thing. And it was my first thing, I thought, oh, God, maybe that's the thing. So I started my little own dinky coaching practice and it was just me, you know, I got it up to 60K in the first year. Do you know what I did that no, none one else in my graduating class did? Followed the six marketing steps that my coach told me right? That's what most people don't do. They go, oh, I could do it better or differently. I just did exactly what he did. And my business got up to 60K in the first year. Um, but, uh, but before I knew what I was, uh, and this is another little tip if you're, if you're starting out, I then contracted to the guy that educated me and I cut my teeth big time on his platform, right? So when I was first speaking to an audience of 3,000 people, it wasn't 3,000 people that I'd put in the room. And I practice my craft. I mean, I've been uh, on stage probably now for over eight, 9,000 hours. So by Malcolm Gladwell's terms, I am not yet an outlier, but I'm on my way, right? 10,000 hours, right? I'll let you know when I get there. I'll let you know when I'm any good. Um, but, uh, but um, you know, it, by the time I then went on to launch my own speaker training business, and, and as Chris said, we took that from zero to seven figures in 12 months. It wasn't because I learned marketing in that same 12 months. For the five years previously, I'd been learning marketing while I was effectively working for somebody else. Do you know what I mean? So I am not a bridge burner. If you go read my bio or you read the headline stories or whatever, you go, whoa, she just gave up her medical career and went to drama school. She just launched her business and went from zero to seven figures in 12 months. Yeah, I did. And every time I launch a business now, we get it up to high six figures within the 12 months. I've done it three times in the last, well, since 2008. So I've got three businesses now. All of them hit at least six figures, if not seven, in the first 12 months. So there's a pattern there, yeah? Um, and it's because there was a shitload of education happened at the same time as learning with other people. I'm a great believer in apprenticing yourself, learning, uh, working to learn, not working to earn. I was, I was just getting ready to come down here. I'll spare you the fact that I was in the bath. Whoops, I said it, there we go. And my phone rang and someone, someone was on that phone who had interviewed me for her client. So I know she, like she's, she's a coach, she coaches people, she runs her own business. She called me up because I'm advertising for a PA at the moment. She rang up and she said, Joe, I want that job. And I was like, whoa, that was not what I expected you to be saying because I, you know, I thought, well, you're already doing your thing. You know, you're running a business. She said, I want, I want to work for you, I want to support you. Why? She's thinking work to learn, not work to earn. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a really smart thing to do. So I, you know, I know a lot of, a lot of speakers out there will, will kind of go, you know, here's how, to, here's how to do it, here's how I did it, here's how to be, be like me, but they won't tell you the real truth of what it took. And I would say nine times out of 10, it wasn't just a single strategy. It wasn't just that single wake up moment that makes for the great story. It was bloody hard work, commitment, dedication. And as Chris said earlier, that burning desire. And until that kind of kicks in, you don't have the, you won't, you won't have the fuel. 
you won't have the fuel. So I, I believe this first piece is getting clear on the thing that you care about more than anything, the corner of the world that you want to change. Because until you can define the corner of the world that you want to change, your, what I would call your leadership space, what you are put on this planet to do, you ain't going to care about it enough to do anything about it. Right? It'll be smart to buy some you know, investment properties with your leftovers at the end of, uh, end of the year or what have you. It'll be, you. You'll do some smart and intelligent wealth creation things because look at you, you're in a room like this. But will you kind of go bam with what you're up to? Maybe not until you find the corner of the world that you want to change and you get deeply committed to that. Is this making sense, team? Yeah, yeah I, want, I want you to just sit with that for a minute. I want you to turn to your buddy, 30 seconds each. I want you to, I call it emptying your basket. So I've just gone blah about a whole lot of stuff. Just <laughs> go to your friend. This is what I want to say about that. Blah, and whatever comes out. It doesn't really matter. Just have a little share. Off you go. And make sure both of you have had a chance to share. Make sure you've both had a chance to share. All right, thank you. If you could bring your shares to a close and turn your attention back to the big group. Excellent. I want to hear from one or two of you. What's there for you? What are you hearing? What are you waking up to? Who wants to share? Who wants to share? What's starting to bubble up? Yes, Chris. I totally agree because when I started the music industry, I was still at college and I was taking afternoons off. I was going and helping out. I was sticking record vinyls and mailers, sending them out to DJs. So, and then when I, you know, I did burn the bridges a little bit, I admit, when I left the music industry. Yeah. And, um, and I, I totally agree. I don't encourage anyone to do that. Yeah. Uh, but I was at the point, I had some savings. I had that, a bit of a comfort zone. Yeah. Sorry, a bit of a, you know, buffer. A cushion, yeah. yeah. Um, and again, I, I align myself with people like Kevin Whelan, who some of you know, who's a mentor of mine, and, and helped him and, and learned from him. Yeah, so yeah. I, it's the apprenticeship is so important, you know, don't underestimate it. And the education while safe, right? It, it is never too early. If you identify a skill set that you see you're going to need, even in, I don't know, four or five years time, right? Even if it's not, if it's not something for now, I, I, I could stand in front of you here right now and say I'm activating things right now that I learned three or four years ago right? But I didn't even have the headspace to, like, we're, we're finally just blitzing Facebook ads, right? We get 96 cent leads, like, whoop, whoop, we're really celebrating. <laughs> like, four years ago was the first time I heard about Facebook advertising and how cool it was, right? Four years it took me, because I really don't like sitting in front of a computer. Now my sister does it all for me. It's brilliant. <laughs> Um, uh, but you know what I mean? Like, it, but I still learned the thing and I learned how it works and all of that kind of stuff. If I didn't have the context for it, it wouldn't have even rated on the Richter scale. So be thinking, you know, get a sense of the, and I always kind of have this idea when it comes to 
When people talk about strategic planning, I never strategic plan anything, rightly or wrongly, right? But I have this kind of vision of what's out there and I get an instinct or a feel for the direction and just take step after step in the right direction. So if you get an intuition or an instinct on, you know, if you kind of feel like maybe one day you're going to invest in property, then do some education now. Do you know, even if it just means read a book. If you feel like maybe one day you're going to start your own business, if you haven't started yet, please start educating yourself on marketing now, right? And one of the best ways I believe to market a business, if you're the business owner and deeply passionate about what the thing does, is speaking. If you're not deeply passionate about what the business does, hire a really good copywriter and make your website do the selling, right? Don't stand up and speak because what works when you speak is your passion for what you're speaking about. Do you guys get the idea? Yeah. So let's talk about this a little bit more in detail because we'll get into now where we, where we want to go today. So over the, over the course of the evening, I want to share with you three real takeaways. One is I want to speak to you about this leadership space because I think this is something that every single one of you could do, even if you love your job. I believe these days employers are looking for thought leaders in roles. You apply for anything, first thing someone does, goes and looks at your Facebook profile, right? Go and, go and look at your Twitter account. What are you speaking about? How many beers you downed on the weekend or are sharing an interesting article from something that you read on the Huffington Post? Do you know what I mean? All of us, it, um, uh, interesting story about um, uh, a company, who was it? HBO. So I run a, a collective for entrepreneurial women. They're all women who are, you know, foundational levels of success are in place. So they're all running, well, they're not all running businesses, but they've all had business experience and most of them are doing six figure plus businesses. We just went on the Orient Express to Paris a couple of weeks ago, it was fantastic. Anyway, one of the members, Jasmine, um, one has been uh, um, nominated as one of the top five wedding photographers in the world. She's now teaching, she has a following on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter of about 150,000 each on those platforms. So she knows a thing or two about social media. So she's just pivoted into sharing about branding and increasing your following as a creative entrepreneur. And she was sharing how one of her clients is a graphic designer and he came to her for her advice because this graphic designer had just lost a bid on a project to H for HBO. You guys know HBO, right? The production company, yeah? Um, and he, he lost it to another design firm that the, uh, that the design firm said were every bit, pretty much on a par. You know, when you get to a level of excellence at whatever your thing is, you know, everyone's pretty much on a par. But HBO went with the other design firm because the design firm had a far bigger following on Instagram. And HBO knew that the design firm would brag about the fact they had the HBO contract on their following. And so therefore, they would get extra exposure that they didn't have to pay for, right? It's the same thing now. If you're an employee, if you're looking to navigate the career path, like put aside even business for a second. People, are, I'm hiring. I'm, when I'm looking for salespeople, when I'm looking for you know, people to join our team, one of the things I do is I go and look at people's following. Who are they? Do they have a stand in the world? Do they have people that they're following? Am I gonna get access to all of those people? That's not the primary thing, but it's always checked. Right? So it's your, I believe every single one of you here in this room should be getting really clear about what is your leadership space. What is it you've got to say in the world, right? What, what do you care about? So let's look at defining that. I want to then share with you about um, effective presentations because a lot of us think speaking is about giving a good talk, getting a round of applause. It ain't that. Turn to the person next to you say, it ain't that. <laughs> Thank you. We'll come to that in a little while. And then I want to give you a, a simple three-step model for influence, for delivering an effective presentation. Um, I, I have a, a seven-step uh, seven process to it, which I teach at the one day. It's in my book. But it takes me about two hours to do it, um, to do it justice. Otherwise, people go out and they do a really botched job of it. So I'll give you the abridged three-step three version um, to give you the sense of it while you're here today. So the problem right now with this thought leadership thing is it's all too easy to build a global profile right now. Three years ago when I was delivering this presentation, at this point, I would say, it's really cool because it's really easy to build a global profile, right? Now, the problem is it's so easy to build a global profile. 
I don't know what, if it, what it's like on, when you open Facebook, but if I get one more person telling me how I too can build a six-figure coaching business, yeah. I will shoot myself, right? And all, apparently all you have to do is go and get a photo of yourself in front of the Eiffel Tower and you've obviously made it. Seriously, I, it's almost the same ad from 18 different women, right? It's extraordinary. Maybe you guys don't, you blokes don't see it. Maybe it's like targeting women, but oh my God. Right? And, and oh, the stories that say, 12 months ago, I was, you know, I was right where you are. I'm like, if you were only there fucking 12 months ago, I'm going to go find a different mentor. <laughs> but, right? Because there's people that were there 20 years ago. They've got a little bit more experience. Do you know what I mean? Yes, ab absolutely. You can help someone no matter where you are on the journey as long as you're a few steps along. Absolutely. But when everybody has access to cheap advertising, to free platform building, when you can make a beautiful looking website for less than 250 pounds, when, you, when this is the great, there is no barrier to entry to looking big online, how do you stand out? How do you stand out? Expertise. It's real, authentic leadership stuff, right? It's actually having something to say to a group of people who are fascinated and motivated by that thing. And that's not flash in the pan stuff, right? It's, it is something you actually deeply care about. So thought leadership isn't for everybody, right? Um, now, I'm, I'm kind of speaking beyond just delivering a good talk right now. I'm talking about owning a space because this is really what I believe most of us who want to start businesses are really wanting to do it for, right? Certainly, um, not everybody, you know, some people are kind of not in that space. But even if you're just selling products, you as the CEO of a company that sells widgets over here, we live in a CEO as celebrity culture, right? Gen Y and millennials don't care about the Kardashians. They, they're heroes, they're heroes are business owners, right? They're the celebs that they care about, right? We, can, can, we don't have to watch what's on TV, we choose everything. And there's this a huge wave with CEO as celebrity. So what have you got to say? Who have you got to say it? How do we stand out? Um, uh, Steve Jobs, think what you will of him, had said this very interesting thing. Your work's gonna fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work right? What you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. So to be seen as a leader, which is the only way to stand out when you start a business, right? It doesn't mean you have to be the global leader of a wide, you know, wide industry, but you have to dominate some subset of it or otherwise you're just the same as everybody else. Yeah. You've got to have something that you're deeply committed to and deeply passionate about. So I call this defining your leadership space. Let me share it to you and we'll have a little play with it here. So talk about finding a, I talk about finding your corner of the world, a group of people that you care about, that you want to impact and have something to say to. Then you define what difference is it that you want to make for that group of people. And then you identify your uniqueness. What is it that has you be unique in their eyes? This is where your credibility, your expertise, your background comes in, right? So um, I was working with a guy today um, who has like a 30, 40 year background in two martial arts, right? He is exquisite at it and had totally been overlooking that as part of his uniqueness. And I said to him, you've got to bring that in. And he said, that was done to death in the 80s, right? You know, using martial arts as, you know, as a business thing. I said, I don't care. It's who you are. The guys that, you know, the guys that wrote those books or who are always talking about the art of war, they never even did any martial arts. You did. That's where I'm talking about authentic leadership. Sometimes it's easy for us to not want to put something out there because we think everyone's done it. But if it's authentic to you, that's the bit that carries the gravitas and carries the weight. So another way of looking at this is, this is what you might have heard referred to as a niche, right? A small defined group of people who easily identify with what you wanna do. I believe these days, if you're, especially if you're just starting a business, start with a niche. Any of you heard of Tony Robbins? Yeah, yeah? okay, great. So what's his niche now? 
Who does he speak to now? Answer, everybody, right? I think it's like 32 million people he's up to and counting, right? Everybody. Anyone know what Tony Robbins' marketing budget is? Answer, very big, right? So you can be the personal development guy for everybody if you've got a marketing budget bigger than, because he already owns the market share, bigger than Tony Robbins. If you don't, and most, I don't know about you, but I don't, right? Most of us need a niche because when you have a smaller group of people that you want to um, identify, then you can actually get through very quickly, yeah? So do you know, now, interestingly, did you know Tony Robbins started with a niche? Does anyone know what niche Tony Robbins started with? Smoking is the big one. No. Overweight. No. Phobias. He got famous doing fast phobia interventions. So people with phobias was his niche. The difference he was making, his topic was how to overcome your phobia in 15 minutes or less. And he did it all over national TV. That's how he got famous, right? His uniqueness, his identity is all around, um, what was his book called in the 80s? Awaken the giant. giant with it. The man is like that tall. I can't think I can, right? He's huge. His teeth are bigger than most people's faces. <laughs> Everything about him is big. That's the identity he has. You go to his events, they are big, long. He, you know, he jumps a lot. Like it's everything is big. There's no kind of gentleness. If he needs gentleness, he brings out sage, right? <laughs> So, um, so this is what you need, yeah? But we need to start small here with this stuff. So I want you to start thinking about this. Let's have a play with it. Let's talk about topic, first of all. Because if you're gonna be speaking about something, if you're gonna be blogging about something, if you're gonna be a stand about something, you have gotta be interested in it. So what might that be? You know, what, that is, what is that for you? I don't know what yours is. Hey, we've already talked about him, John Lee. Um, so when John first came to my seminars, his passion was property. It's kind of evolved now into wealth creation and all of that kind of stuff. But his big thing, what was motivating him in the early days was property, right? And you couldn't shut him up about it. Obviously, he was going to do well. Um, do any of you know Shah Wasmond? Have you come across Shah? Okay, some of you, if you, if you had, she's a, uh, an MBE. She got on the New, New, New York honours list, New Year's honour roll this, uh, this year. Um, but uh, has done some amazing, amazing work. Um, she was one of the people sitting at the, sitting at the kitchen table, literally with James Dyson when he was just like six people, and she was, uh, she helped him got that, got that brand out there. The world's only female boxing promoter to date. Um, Chris, she, she had the idea of Chris Eubank on the white horse. If any of you follow boxing, anyway, amazing woman who teaches business. What she's passionate about and you can't shut her up about is business. She'll never stop talking about it, right? Um, do any of you know Simon Coulson, another one of my students? Yeah, so Simon, passionate about internet marketing. He walked into my um, three-day boot camp actually at one point and there was kind of a little lull fell over the room because this guy makes a hell of a lot of money speaking from stage, right? More than I do, right? Um, and uh, he walked in and, and some, he sat down in the, in the room. Someone leaned over to him and said, what are you doing here, Simon? And um, he's like, uh, you, you, I, I thought you know how to sell from the stage like really well, right? And he said, well, I'm not converting 100% of the room yet. <laughs> right? For me, that is like the beginner's mindset, yeah? Like th there's always more to learn. He's a, he's a rock star. This is Kathy Burke. She's the Global Partnerships Director of The Hunger Project. So you probably wouldn't know her. She's Australian. Um, uh, for her, her deep passion Ending world hunger, baby. She never shuts up about it. She'll always talk about it to anyone who'll listen. And so for her, that was obviously going to be the, the thing that she talks about. Did anyone know Billy Schwer? Yeah. Another one of my grads. He's a world champion boxer. So what's he not going to shut up about? Boxing. So he's tweaked it into mental boxing. So that's his topic, right? So if you've got a story and you can, you know, he's kind of um, found his angle and his uniqueness in that topic, uh, and teaches mental boxing now when he speaks. This is Caroline Marsh. She was on The Secret Millionaire. Do any of you know Caroline? Uh, yeah, maybe. Another one of my graduates. Um, her, what she, she's so deeply passionate about is helping people get their start. So she runs a program called Concept to Cash in 90 Days. And she's always, whenever you look at her websites and stuff, posting about getting started, getting out there, getting started. She just doesn't shut up about it, right? So you've got to want to um, talk about it all the time. 
Now it's really easy to look at that and go, well, I can see why they're all successful businesses and why their speaking careers took off because that's property. Of course, we know people want to hear about property or business or internet marketing or you know um, fundraising inside a charity. This all makes sense, you know, or a world champion of something. Of course, they're going to do well speaking. Well, what if your passion is red wine? Anyone else passionate about red wine? I'm deeply passionate about red wine, <laughs> right? Um, uh, one of my one of my students, Les Schofer loved red wine. He was Bulgarian. He was out there. He's an Australian guy. He used to do wine tours of the local wineries in, in Melbourne. Um, but he wanted a high ticket product to sell because he was sick of schlepping people around at a, on a day rate, you know, doing these winery tours. So he decided to do a winery tour to Bulgaria. So what he did was something he called a client appreciation all of his past tour guests along to um, a client appreciation night, which involved tasting some wines from Bulgaria. And, uh, and then he invited them all to join him on a trip to Bulgaria. And profit margins on his trip to Bulgaria were far higher than driving the bus around the local winery area. Does it, do you see what I'm talking about? When you start speaking about something you care about, you get you can position um, you can position things as a premium, right? Far far e more easily. I had a guy come to my trainings once who was an apiarist, right? He kept bees, so he used to talk about the health benefits of honey, and then guess what he sold at the back of the room? Honey, but not pots of honey. Oh no 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 no! Little sticks of honey, like you know the sugar. They have sugar comes in the sticks in a cafe. Little sticks, and they're a pound a pop but you buy a box of like shots, honey shots, right? So a box of 30 honey shots for like 30 quid, right? Far premium. When you're the speaker, when you're up the front of the room, you can charge a premium, right? Because you're the? Yeah, the expert, right? The expert. Um, uh, or you might be passionate about this and you're looking at the thing under them, not what's happening on top. <laughs> One of my mates, who some of you may know quite well, does anyone know Daniel Priestley? who runs the KPI programs, love Daniel, except for how drunk he made my husband at his bucks night, for which I will never forgive him. Um, but he got, he, 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 his very first speaking career, he doesn't talk about this much anymore, but he shared it with me on an interview and I will share it forever because it's such a great story, was running seminars called How to Make the Most of a Third of Your Life. And do you know what he sold? Latex mattresses. And he's, he said, when he was telling the story, he said, but, but a really good night's sleep only gives you enough passion to run a business for about six months, right? So it needs to be something you want to talk about forever and ever and ever and ever, right? So it's really important. But, you know, for six months, hey, there was a business in it. And camels, I had one of my students come into, uh, we always ask, you know, what's your passion? What do you talk about? I had this guy shout out camels. I'm like, what do you mean camels? Like the cigarettes? He's like, no, 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 camels. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I go over to the Middle East because he was in, this is in Western Australia, right, where I was running, this, running the course this time. And he said, I go over to the Middle East and I uh, talk about the breeding programs for camels that we have here in Australia. And then I export once a year a big crop of camels over to sheiks in the Middle East. And I'm like, oh my God, who knew, right? <laughs> so that was what he, his presentations were doing. Now, he, and he, you, he, you could not shut that man up about camels. So it's like, what can you not shut up about? That's the piece, right? What's the topic, the thing that you really love that you, you might not even be a master of it yet, right? You might not even be a master of it yet, but you can hold the space for it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Chris, you said this beautifully earlier, right? You know, on the escape the rat race journey, you know, yes, you're, you're streets ahead of most. But you said, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not there yet, but what's Chris doing? He's holding a space where he's bringing in expertise. Oprah isn't the expert at anything but all her buddies are experts. Do you see what I mean? Um, when she started out, I mean, that, these days you might kind of go, well, she's got some expertise of her own, but in the early days, do you know what I mean? So you don't, you don't even have to have the expertise as long as you care about the thing enough to show up day after day, week after week, month after month and talk, share, create the space, run the meetup, do whatever the thing is, yeah? That's the, that's the driver. So take 30 seconds with your buddy. What's that thing for you? Do you know what it is yet or not? If you do, share it. If not, tell them you don't know it yet. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> the first hour, so. Okay, great. Thanks.
Um, so got, um, until, yes, yeah, so I've got another half an hour, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks. And switch over, make sure everyone gets a chance to share. Switch over. Okay, thank you. If you could finish your conversations, just a little check in that one. Turn your attention back up to the group. May I ask, how many of you are really clear about that thing you can't be shut up about? Raise your hand up if you're really clear about your topic already. How many of you got a feel for it but it's not clearly defined? Yeah, how many of you got no idea? No idea at all? <laughs> oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had a thing and you lost a pack, maybe burned out kind of. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Um, so that's a vitality question. Yes, yes. So you probably know your thing, but your priority, replenish energy. Replenish your energy. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with business, everything to do with nurturing, loving, lots of supplements, lots of sleep, lots of water, lots of all of the good stuff. I totally know what that feels like. Do you know, it's interesting. I nearly burned out speaking. And everyone wanted to know, how do you run a business speaking? I'm like, go away. <laughs> right? Seriously, I was in London one weekend, Los Angeles the next weekend, um, Sydney the next weekend. The guy doing our scheduling, really, I wanted to throttle him. Um, it, I was in a permanent state of jet lag and literally nearly burned out. And I stopped. I, 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 I stopped. And um, this was just, uh, I just turned 30 as well. So that big kind of, whoa, you know, wake up moment. And... Um, and uh, my hu husband, he wasn't my husband at the time, he was my boyfriend at the time, he said, I'm not going to let you make a decision for four months. You're going to do nothing for four months. Best advice ever. In that four month period of time, I had three business proposals. Let me give you half of my business from really big, you know, big players in the industry to do for my business what you did for the business that you were working in over there. Um, and all of them fizzled out. Because the only reason I didn't say yes, because I had an embargo on decision making. Um, and all I did for what turned into nine months was replenish, replenish, replenish. And everybody, all of my old students were saying to me, teach me the business of speaking. That's what I want to know, the business of speaking. How did you do that? How do you, well, I'm like, not going to do it, 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 not going to do it. Nine months it took me to replenish my energy enough. I went, oh, okay. And that's why we then went from zero to seven figures in 12 months. Because I had people asking me for it and I had the energy for it by then. Rest, replenish, rest, replenish. Um, so let's have a look at the next little part of this, which is your niche, okay? Your corner of the world, your corner of the world. What's your corner of the world? So a couple of case studies to point this out. We already talked about Tony Robbins before. Kerry Phipps was a life coach, like a lot of life coaches. Does anyone know any life coaches? Anyone know more than one? Anyone is one? Yeah, right? We all know some life coaches. <laughs> Um, and uh, um, here's the thing about life coaches, there's no, di like when you ask them, and Kara was this, so I said to her, so who do you help? Oh, my tools, they can help anyone. I do the results coaching system, which to Kerry meant something, but to all of the rest of us, we go, okay, results coaching. And when you say, so when you go to network, you say, I'm a life coach, I, can, I help people to get results. What happens to most people's faces? <laughs> right? So you really need to have a niche. So one of the first things we did in mentoring with Kerry was we said, get a niche. She got a niche, regional entrepreneurs. She chose regional entrepreneurs because she cared about them because she was one. She came from a small country town. Um, she wrote a book called Lifting the Lid on High Achievers where she interviewed successful regional entrepreneurs to establish her positioning, right? And uh, she then started her topic, which was connecting. The reason she chose connecting, A, she liked talking about it a lot, B, biggest problem for regional entrepreneurs is isolation, right? They feel like the big fish in the small pond, they're the freaks of nature in their local area, always up to crazy stuff when everybody else is just a bit same, same, right? So she could really speak to that niche very clearly. She doubled her revenue in 12 months, right? 
chose a niche. It's really powerful. It's so everyone gets scared about choosing a niche because they think, oh, I'm going to miss out on a whole bunch of stuff. But you are already missing out on all the business until you choose the niche, then you get some. Does that make sense? You can always pivot, you can always go beyond, but you've got to start with something. Don't any of you know Elaine Wilkins? She's over here in the UK. She runs the Chrysalis Effect. So her niche when I met her and she started working with her, she was at the same um, training as John Lee actually, were sufferers of chronic fatigue and ME. What's the main problem with sufferers of chronic fatigue and ME? They're knackered, so therefore they have no energy, energy so therefore they have no which means they usually don't have a job. job, thank you. Which means they very rarely have much money. money, which means it's a really tough gig to make any money in that niche, right? They were making um, about 1,500 pounds a month between two of them, right? Not enough to sustain a job, really. She would not give up that niche though because she deeply wanted to make a difference for it. So what we did, we had a conversation, she established a secondary niche in her business in health practitioners. So these are alternative therapists, nutritionists, kinesiologists, these types of people, which the people with ME and chronic fatigue were already visiting. Does this make sense? Yeah. So she then trained the health practitioners in how to become experts at dealing with chronic fatigue and ME. Plus she had this really great online program that they could be affiliates for. And she taught them pretty much how to make sure that the people came back because they used to always doctor shop, right? People would doctor shop because no one had the solution. So she taught them the program. She started training, the certifying, um, or she just, which is what she still does now, certifies people in how to become ME practitioners and ME specialists, uh, which is her topic. They went from 1,500 a month to making 30 grand in a weekend. Would you say the numbers are a little bit better? <laughs> yeah, right? So this is really important. If you've got a niche you care deeply about, but they can't afford to sustain a business, ask yourself, is there a niche you care almost as much about or through whom you can reach the people you care most about? Yeah? That you can actually run your business in and either scholarship in the others or as, as, um, as uh, Elaine has done, she's empowering the people they're already going to to do a better job. Yeah? Good little question for you. The other way you can establish your niche is look at who are you already attracting. So some of you might already have a few clients. Um, so you have a look at who your clients are. I asked um, Jodie Chapman to do this. So what Jodie did is she went and had a look at all of her clients and she realized that 80% of her clients fell into the niche of mental health. She was a naturopath, right? So nutritionist naturopath. But she looked at where most of her clients were coming from. It was mental health, um, anxiety, depression, ADHD, right? So she started running a webinar called How to Overcome Anxiety, Depression and ADHD, right, naturally. Um, every time she runs that webinar, and this is really important because most people think speaking is what I'm doing right now to a group of people. You can do it online. It's every video you ever create. We'll talk about this stuff in a minute. So she did it all with webinars. She brings an additional two and a half grand a month in product sales that takes none of her time. That's business ownership. Right? She doesn't have to do, do anything to make that money. It's all set up and automated. Um, and there's also an additional two and a half grand in additional clinic visits when she does her webinars. So she's got this little tap that she turns on every time she wants some more income. Pretty cool? Yeah. So the secret to all of these successes is niche, right? A little corner of the world that's clearly defined that you care about. Take 30 seconds with your buddy. Have a chat about it. Off you go. Thank you, Mrs. Yeah, thank you. Make sure you've all had a chance to share.
Chris, is it 10 to you want me to finish? Yeah. Perfect. All right, thank you. Just a little touch base on that one, if you could turn your attention back to the big group. <clears throat> um, from many, many years experience mentoring business owners, that will be the hardest decision you'll ever make because you will resist it kicking and screaming, right? Especially if there's a really obvious one, that's when you're most resistant, right? It's really, really hard to pin down. So if you've done it, kudos, well done. Has anyone already chosen their niche and they love it? Cool, right? So much easier, right? You can, every email you write, it's really easy to write, right? It's so much easier. So if you can do it, do it, right? If you can do it, do it. It's one of those things you often can't do for yourself. You need to get it reflected back to you. And then the final piece, which I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on today is identity, it's your uniqueness. But it's why there's loads of wealth creation people in the world, but only one, Robert Kiyosaki. Brand is, what is it? Rich dad, poor dad, right? Didn't even have the damn rich dad. It was like a conglomeration of people, right? I was devastated when I found that out. Right? But damn fine branding. Yeah, that's his, his uniqueness. You can't touch it. Right? No one will ever be as big as Tony Robbins. Right? His whole idea, that whole, and he, he would never be front lined. But I bet somewhere, somewhere along the line 30 years ago, you know, a branding person said to him, You're pretty big. Yeah. Right? Why don't we call it Awaken the Giant? Just saying, you know? <laughs> right? So there's something, it's often, there's something about you which is, which is really unique to you. And it's about, you know, you want to own that. You really need to own that, okay? And again, it's one of those things you can't often see for yourself. Anyway, um, now, when it comes to, you define your leadership space, right? So let's say you've got those three circles worked out. You've found this little leadership space here in the middle. What's the fastest way to be seen as the leader in that space? Fastest. Yeah, creating content, but even if you've got created the content, create before that, well, not before that, but, but even if you've got that, so, so you've got that IP, it's sitting there on your desk. Does anyone know you're the leader? You've got to tell people about it, right? Fastest way you'd be seen as an expert in something is this. You move from here and you get up here. There's like this magical line that runs across the front here and I call it the credibility line. And all you have to do to be automatically assumed to be the expert at your thing is shift from here where you're in the audience to here where you're the speaker. And it doesn't matter what, as long as you can string a sentence together and sound like you know at least 10% more than the people sitting in the audience, <laughs> the assumption is you know your stuff. Right? When was the last time you were at a networking event? Someone put their hand up and said, yeah, look, I'm an accountant and, um, uh, and uh, you know, end of tax year is coming. I just want to, one piece of advice for everyone here or something like that. All they had to do was say I'm an accountant and give a tiny piece of advice and everyone in the room, if they were looking for an accountant, went and spoke to who? Them or did they go to the yellow pages? Do you see what I mean? It's just when you get the light shone on you, the 15 seconds of fame thing, the automatic assumption is expertise right? It's horrible, but it's true. But it's fabulous as well. That's why I say the fastest way is speaking. Because you don't have to pin anything down. You don't have to spend hours with the web design. You, have to, you don't have to write the book. You don't have to do any of that. You have to have something credible to teach, yes? And you do have to know your stuff. This is about authenticity, integrity, all of those things. But we don't need to have that conversation. You guys wouldn't do any of it if you didn't have that, yeah? Um, but you just, all you got to do is shift your position in the room. Shift your position in the room. And that means when someone asks a question, put your hand up, right? It can be as little, simple as that. It's interesting at my events, right? The people who put their hand up and share and somewhere in their share get out what they do for a living, they're the ones who get new business while they're at the events. It's not rocket science. It's that autom automatic assumption of credibility. So step up and present. Um, and I'm not just talking about speaking from the stage, right? It's getting visible 
in all areas. So we can do tele-seminars. If you're currently got a job and you're worried about your boss finding out that you're starting something on the side, just do it quietly online, right? <laughs> do tele-seminars, do webinars, do something like that. Podcasts are like, you know, growing hugely at the moment. And there's some really great free resources on there on how to like, you know, dominate in podcasting and stuff. If you've got something you love talking about, start a podcast, right? It's not that hard to do. Um, some of them are awful, so please start a good one, right? <laughs> um, um, webinars, right? You can, you can run webinars from the comfort of your own home. This is one of the reasons Jody Chapman started doing webinars, not live events. She was a total scaredy cat. She didn't want to stand in front of a group. She had heaps of fear around public speaking. So she said, I remember her coming up to you, she said, Joe, I know that I've just spent three days learning how to present from the stage. Would it be okay if I started with webinars? I'm like, of, of course, like you need my permission, of course. Um, interestingly, she started with a webinars. On her second webinar, she had a guy from Germany listening in who asked her to come over and speak at a conference where there was 400 people. And she's like, oh shit, Joe, I'm gonna have to do it. My first time's gonna be to 400. I said, let's run something small in the clinic before then, just to have a little practice. Um, but uh, you know, if you're, if you're scared, webinar's great because you have the whole thing scripted out right there and you can just about read it out, right? Don't, but you could. Um, video, YouTube, like just you grab a iPhone these days and as long as the lighting's reasonable and the audio is okay, you can get a really great quality little video together. Start sharing what it is you know. And if people start commenting and sharing back and enjoying it, you might be on to something, right? Um, interviewing people, if you're being interviewed, right? Or interviewing others, it's just about claiming your leadership space. Do you guys get the idea? And every time you do any of these things, I want you to be thinking about it as an effective presentation. What sort? Effective. Effective, right? Not just something you get a round of applause, but something where you're thinking about what comes next, because that's the key thing. We need to change our thinking about how we present. Online, offline, every time we network, everything, right? Most of us think speaking or presenting is something we do when we get an opportunity to do it and we think what we're gonna share. But it's not about that. It is about that but there's about so much more. So I want you to write this down, guys. Every presentation is the opportunity to inspire further action towards growth. Every presentation is the opportunity to inspire further action towards growth. So every interview you do, opportunity to inspire action. <coughs> every podcast you do, interview to, opportunity to inspire further action. Every YouTube video you put up, What's the next step you want people to do? Is it to tune in next week? Is it to join your email subscriber list? Is it to follow you on Twitter? What is it, right? Think of that first and then you work backwards from that place. Is this making sense? Yep. yep. Then you create your content, your presentation to encourage that next step, right? To fulfill on their educational needs, to absolutely build rapport, do yes, all of those things and Think next steps first. Turn to someone next to you say, think next steps first. That's quite hard. That should be, should be a tongue twister, a bit of a voice warm up, right? What sorts of next steps? Well, it depends what your presentation's about, right? It might be just to change a behavior. You might kind of say, um, sorry, if you think about in property investing, then the very first thing you should go and do is download the Right Move app and subscribe to properties in your area to get a sense of value. In fact, all of you right now, get out your um, iPhone and get the Right Move app on there, right? That's changing a behavior, that's an action, yeah? Um, maybe it's to give to your cause. So um, Kathy Burke from The Hunger Project, this is a really great case study in, um, in effective presentations from a charitable perspective. Do any of you speak on behalf of a charity or you're really an, act an activist in a, in a a non non-profit or anything like that. Is anyone into any of that kind of stuff? Cool. Okay, a couple of you. Yeah. So, so here's one of the things that I love about. So, Kathy came along to my uh, to my three day training, and she really saw the power of this effective presentation model. Most charities, if they want to raise money, get you together and tell you about what. What do they talk to you about? Their mission, their vision, the great work that they do. If you like the sound of it, help us out. Right. You guys sit on television all the time. We turned that on its head. Kathy said, we've got great value to share with our investors. 
Let's take the leadership lessons from the villages of Bangladesh, of, U of Uganda, of Malawi, the amazing leaders, unlikely leaders, she's written a book about it now, unlikely leaders in Bangladesh, in, in India, take their stories back to the classroom in the UK, in Australia, <coughs> in, in the USA. And let's run a leadership workshop, right? It, it turns the whole thing upside down. People come along to that leadership workshop, it's called Rethinking What's Possible, and they go home with incredible value for their own leadership. Does, do you guys get what I'm talking about? Right? By sharing the stories of what these incredible women and men have done in their villages and how they've made shit happen when it was too hard, they didn't have enough time, they didn't have enough money, and they changed the world in their corner of the world. Right? You can't be in that space for two hours and, not, and, and think that whatever you're facing is insurmountable. Right? People go home with amazing value and guess what? They become investors in The Hunger Project. So it's a, and it's a value exchange. She takes groups of corporates now based on that program who invest 200 grand in the Hunger Project and she takes 20 of their top leaders out to India to learn leadership from illiterate women. It's extraordinary. Very, very innovative. Do you guys get the idea? And it all started with sitting in the room going, effective presentation. Oh, it's about delivering value, inviting a next step. We're missing. We've got the next step. We've always asked the next step, but we've never really delivered value, right? So um, free gift. You, you could ask people to, um, give you, to, uh, to give you their contact details in return for a free gift. In actual fact, why don't I do that right now? Why don't I do that right now? Um, I'm going to teach you my three steps to an effective presentation, right? Would you like the full seven-step model in wild amounts of detail so that if you wanted to do a presentation, you had it. Would that be helpful for you guys? Yes. Right, I have an e-book on it. Would you like me to send it to you? Yes. Great. So what I need you to do is either get a business card if it's got your email address or write your name and an email address on a piece of paper and hand it into the aisle. And I'll get Ange to, could you make sure we send everybody that e-book? So you could do something like that, right? Thank you, darling. Thanks. Um, so think about, and that's a really good way of going, gee, if you haven't got an ebook or if you haven't got whatever the thing is that you think people might need, if no one gives you the, your business card at this point, don't bother making it. If they do give you it, then make it. Don't worry, I wrote the book as a real book. But, um, but do you see what I mean? You can test if people are, if people are interested and in saying, oh, yes, please, then you can do that, right? Um, cool. Just hand them along to the aisle and we'll, we'll get those sent out to you. Um, what else could you do? This is another one you can do, is book a consultation with you, right? Um, let me give you an example. I'm going to use your brother-in-law for this one, Ange. Do any of you know Paul Avens? Anyone heard of Paul Avens? Yep, yeah, cool. So Paul Avens is a business coach. He got invited to speak at an exhibition where he wasn't allowed to sell, right? So he didn't sell. What he did was he delivered great value. And then he said, hey, if you guys come with me to my stand, I've got some really cool goodies for you guys. And he marched out of that little seminar room across the whole exhibition and had about 150 people follow him about 200 metres through the main exhibition space. The promoters, the organisers kind of saw that happen and went, what the hell just happened there, right? He obviously built up the value of what he was going to be giving away at his stand and what have you. Um, anyway, he did £1,500 in sales at his stand when he wasn't allowed to sell after that because he just, he offered really great value and people went and got the thing, right? But what they were going, what the other thing he was doing while they were there was booking consultations with him. And so he then got 10 grand's worth of coaching business, 10 grand's worth of coaching business out of that. Does that make sense, team? Yeah. Out of having people come, booking a consultation with him, and then he turned it into clients. The other thing you could do is sell your product or service right then and there on the spot if it's appropriate. It's not always appropriate, but if it is appropriate, then you could absolutely do that. You know, sell your coaching packages or sell your book or sell your whatever your thing is, right? Does that give you an idea of what sorts of actions you could do? Mm -hmm. So depending on where you're up to in your business right now, what might be a cool next step if you got the opportunity to speak? If you've got no business yet, Maybe you give the opportunity to, um, you know, uh, get your 20 minute video on such and such. Oh, we haven't made it yet, but they don't need to know that, mm -hmm. right? If they give you their email address. So just brainstorm with your buddy. What might be a cool next step? Off you go.
Sorry, Joanna, I was too busy sniping away. What was the pre-context behind that slide there? So I can put a little caption to go with it. Um, it's about uh, effective presentations are ones where someone does All right, let me hear a few. Let me hear a few. Bring your attention back to the big group. A couple of hands. I want to hear what, what, what could you do? What invitations could you what invitations could you make? So let's say, you know, Chris asks you to present next uh, next month. Or at your you might go, well, this isn't my target market, but at your networking event, or you're asked to speak somewhere, like let's just say a dream opportunity lands in your lap that could be the thing that helps you accelerate whatever you're doing. What simple thing could you ask that would help build your community or increase your revenue or what? Let's hear, hear a couple. Yes. And tips. Great. Of, of whatever you're talking about. Yeah, great. So even if you haven't created the video or the ebook or the whatever, um, I'm putting together 10 tips, a, a 10 tip template on this. Would you guys be interested in that? Yes, please. Great. Just throw, in, throw me in your business cards here or drop your business card in the bowl on the way out. Yeah? Simple. You just started building something crucial in business, which is what? An email list. Right, you've heard of this, right? How important that is. I once spoke to a corporate trainer. She was in like an image stylist who kind of worked with C-level execs and stuff. And I said, how long have you been doing it? 18 years. How many people have you spoken to over that period of time? Oh, maybe mm, 10, 20,000. I'm like, wow, of course. Cool. how big's your email list? Oh, she's not bad, 68. <laughs> I went, what? Because for her, her database was the people who booked her to come in. She was about to do a tour for a bank and probably speak to about 3,000 people. I said, do not get off the freaking stage without at least getting the email contact details of everyone in the room who loved you, right? Offer them something fab. Have you got something? She's like, oh my God, I've got so much stuff. I just never even thought about it, right? It's so simple. Start with that, right? If you're even more courageous, maybe you could sell something from the platform, yeah? My mate Peter Thompson, don't you know Peter Thompson? Have you come across Peter Thompson? He's an information marketer from way back, like his grandfather over here in the UK. So he heard me talk through my seven, my seven shift formula, which I'm going to send you in the ebook, right? Um, uh, he actually just saw me do it on a video. Then he came to my three day thing. But in the intervening time before he got to the three day thing, he applied the three steps. Um, and he made 207,000 pounds selling a mentoring program with a room of only 42 people. <laughs> Who'd be pretty happy with that? Yeah, me too, right? It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And most people go out and they start doing this sort of stuff, you know, depends on the price point, obviously. But can you see that the numbers, when you start selling one to many rather than onesie twosie, the numbers can get silly very quickly, right? They get silly very quickly. Most people go, oh, they're crazy numbers. But if you make 10 sales of 500 pounds instead of working for three hours to make one sale of 500 pounds, it's much easier, right? So these are the sorts of things to think about. That's why I think learning an effective presentation is probably one of the most profitable business skills you'll ever learn if you're in the area of thought leadership of some sort, right? Um, now, getting people to take action needs a skill and that skill is influence. What is it, team? Influence. And I'm going to give you a simple three-step formula so you could go out and put a presentation together for when Chris asks you next, next month, right? Um, but, uh, but before I do that, I need to kind of unstick this thing called influence a little bit because I don't know about you, but when I kind of was thinking, oh, you know, how to win friends and influence people, I, I don't want to influence people. Like, I want people to be their own person, right? I deeply care that people make their own choices and the choices that are best for them. I, I don't want to push or pit you know, any of that sort of, I had some real stuff around influence. Can anyone relate to that? 
right? Not wanting to, because, you know, because we think that influence is like chasing people to get them to do something that they don't want to do, right? Or, or shouting at them and bullying them and to get them to do something that they, that they don't want to do. Or, oh, dangle a big enough carrot and you can get someone to do anything, right? Or it's like, um, you know, treating people like little, little puppets with clever little language patterns and they'll do things that they don't want to do or bang them over there with the back of a mallet and right, get them to do something they don't want to do. When I thought about influence, these were the images I had in my mind. Making, making people do something that they don't want to do. Can anyone relate to that? And it stopped me from starting the business that eventually went incredibly well for a very long time, right? Until I looked up the word influence. Like literally, the de definition of it in the dictionary. And then I went to the etymology of it because I believe every word has a spirit. It's got, a, it's got an energy to it and it's in the root of the word. Where did it come from? You know, language has real power, like real, real power. And I looked up the etymology of the word influence and it was nothing like any of these things. In fact, when I looked it up, it reminded me of these guys. Who are these guys? Three, what sort of men were they? Wise. Okay, what were they doing in this picture? Following Sorry, what sort of men were they? <laughs> Following a... Oh, right. Okay, anyway, um, it reminded me of them because the etymology of the word influence comes from about the mid-13th century, Latin, Old English, very similar apparently, meaning a streaming, ethereal power from the stars acting upon the character and destiny of men. Wow. Right? <laughs> a streaming ethereal power from the stars acting upon the character and destiny of men and women. <laughs> now that caused me to wake up and get that if one is connected to source, and I don't know what you call it, God, higher self, the universe, your destiny, whatever. In this case, streaming ethereal power from the stars. When we get connected to source, and every single one of you in this room has been connected to source at some point, you've had an idea I didn't say, right? You've been connected to source. When you're connected to source and standing in your authenticity, and standing in your integrity, in your leadership space, because only you can stand in your leadership space. You're the only person perfectly crafted to stand there. Anything less than impacting men and women and not just changing the actions they take, their destiny, but changing their very character isn't honouring that connection to your source, isn't it? When you're connected, when you're deeply connected, and, and, and okay, I'm getting a bit spiritual here, but when you're connected to something that you were put on this planet to do, I believe you are doing yourself, us, and your maker, whatever version of that you have, an incredible disservice if you are not such a stand for that, that you shift people's destiny and character for the good, right? When I got that, everything shifted. Because when I knew whatever I was being a stand for, as long as it was coming from source, as long as I could stand there and know, know that I was doing my very best to follow my marching orders, which is kind of how I relate to it, right? Then I knew that I had to be a stand for people's greatness because that was my purpose, yeah? Now, unless this is all getting a bit esoteric, let's have a look at some steps. <laughs> there are three simple steps to influence. So you could go out, put together a five minute presentation, 30 minute, 60 minute, whatever. These are them, involve, inspire, invite. Real simple, what is it? Involve, inspire, invite. Right, I'll spend a little moment to give you a bit more uh, of flesh on these bones. So step one is involve. At the very beginning of your presentation, the first thing you wanna do is, and, and like whether it be video or live or whatever, right, is get your audience involved. Now, I'm having you talk back to me, you know, ask, raising hands and all of that kind of stuff, but you don't necessarily need to do that. What you do want to do is make sure they're interested in what you're talking about. And the, very, the, the most powerful way to get somebody interested in you is to show up as yourself, right? 
That's the most important bit. Be yourself. It happens before you even open your mouth, right? Check this out. Oh, isn't that cute? That's my son James when he was three months old. He's so cute. Whenever you see a picture of a little baby of that age, everyone goes, ah, and your heart goes, ah. When we're that age, we have no filter of who we are or who we're not. We cannot be anything other than ourselves. What does it call forth in everybody else? Love openness, right? So it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you think is wrong with you. As long as you show up purely you, all that you can call forth in others is love and openness. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's really important you don't pull on the mask. It's really important that you don't worry, you know, I've got to be like Joe Martin or I've got to be like Chris or I've got to be like you know, Jim D. Martini or something. You don't, right? Just be yourself. Really important. And if you're a newbie at speaking, it means you get up there and you say, look, I am a total newbie at this but I'm deeply passionate about helping people grow their property portfolio. So do you mind if I look over my notes and do a really bad job of presenting, but try and get these key pieces to you? Is that okay? What does everyone say? Yes. yes. And then they stop judging you for being a, a you know, a, a newbie speaker and start really loving the content. You guys got the idea? Yeah. So totally be yourself, right? Really important. And then the second part of involving people is meeting them where they're at. So who's in the room and where are they at? You know, the content that I'm sharing with you today, I've shared to many, many different audiences, right? Some who've spoken lots, some who've spoken never, and it's all get, you know, I make sure I know who's in the room and where they're up to so we can couch it and land it for the, for the right people. Do you guys get the idea? Yeah. You know, what are the biggest problems? So meet them where they're at, take them on a journey to their higher self. So you ask questions at the beginning. Really, I talk about it as the dance of partnership, okay? Someone's always leading the dance, but you, only because you have permission to lead, right? So important. The second step then is to inspire. Now this is the piece where you teach something, but you don't teach it for the purposes of educating, you teach it for the purposes of inspiring them to get connected to their vision for the future. Because action happens where the vision you show them for what you see for their future matches up to the vision that they have for their future, right? So all you're doing is saying this particular tool, can you see and feel how it could make a difference for you, whatever it is you're teaching, yeah? If they see it, then they'll go, give me more of that. You don't have to sell anything because they saw it. Does this make sense? Yeah. So inspire. When you're putting together your presentation, a short talk should only have, like a keynote kind of thing, should only have one key message, right? One key message. My key message from this talk, start speaking. That's it. If that's all you do as a result of this is think, wow, I should get out and start speaking. Uh, my, my work here is done, right? And then three or four key points that back that up. My three or four key points, claim your leadership space, make sure you're delivering effective presentations and use the skill of influence, which I will teach you how to do. Do you see the, see the model? All of those towards getting you to the one outcome of get started, yeah? Um, so three or four key points, no more than that. Otherwise you get too much content. And use the content to breathe life into their dreams, right? Inspire to breathe in, expire to breathe out. So you're breathing into the dreams of your audience as you teach. And then finally, invite. If you do a really good job of the first two steps, people are sitting there going, that was really great. How do I do something else with that person? Or what else can I, what else can I learn? How do I learn more of that? Would you agree with that? Yeah. Right? You've all been in presentations and then all they do is they kind of finish and you give them a round of applause. It's like, huh, but what else? So just invite. The worst thing that's going to happen is someone's going to say, no thanks, because they didn't see their journey matching up with what you painted and that's fine, right? Because they weren't in your corner of the world. All is good, right? No is great. Yes is great, no is great. Maybe crap, right? <laughs> so all you want to do is give them enough information to be able to make their decision, right? So invite action, do it in a very simple way, a very clear way and a very confident way, okay? So they know exactly what the step is, they know exactly how to get involved with you, whatever that may be, and you've spelled it out for them, okay? So what are the three steps? Involve, inspire, 
invites. All right, good. Turn to someone next to you and just empty the basket. Off you go. Show them you. Make sure you've both had a chance to share. All right, thank you very much. If you could turn your attention back to the big group. How many of you feel that you've got a good little model that next time you're asked to deliver any presentation, you could whack something together pretty quickly? Yes? Awesome. How many of you feel that presentations are out there in your horizon in some way, shape or form? Raise your hand up high if you feel that. Cool. Well, for those of you who's like, nope, absolutely not. Anyone? Absolutely not? Okay, that's cool. For those of you who feel that it is, I'd be doing you a grave disservice if I didn't invite you. <laughs> to take the next step with me. So I'd just like to take two minutes to share with you what the next step would be. It's a really simple one actually. Um, if you're interested, we are running our Presentation Secrets One Day Workshop. It's a really powerful workshop where we go deeper on some of the distinctions that we've talked about today. We go in depth into that seven step formula so that you've actually got a really powerful, um, uh, with all the gear changes, right? The whole way through it to be able to put that, put that to, together. We also look at your elegant business model. So we talk about how to create information products so that you can not only sell your time for money. You know, you can if you want to. I still do, right? Seven and a half grand, but I still sell my time for money, right? Um, uh, but you've got products that you can sell and all of those sorts of things. And we talk a bit more about the mindset stuff behind it, the confidence side of things, etc. It's a really powerful one day. At the end of that one day, people go out and they start increasing the amount of money they make from stage. I mean, Francis Dolly is um, a guy who came along last year to the, to the one day event. Um, and he was doing some speaking. He's a property property speaker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, did you guys know Francis? Yeah, 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 yeah. Love him. To he's got a stammer, you know, um, really not someone you would expect to be a great public speaker. He was making a few sales. The first time afterwards, he went out and absolutely blitzed it. He sold like, I don't know, 40, 50% of the room into his one day workshop and made like a few grand, covered the cost of like every bit of training he's done with me since, right? from just this one day, because he had the model so clearly. He knew his thing and he had his model really clearly. It was really, really powerful. Um, so it's a really powerful one day. If you could bear me for a whole day, it's all me. Um, and, uh, and you'll meet some amazing people there. We I mean, you know, I've shared some of my students and they're really great quality business owners who are up to big things. We also have total newbies in the room, people who just have this feeling that they want to change the world and they don't even know their packaging yet, but they know that it's out there in their journey. So. If anything I've said with you has resonated with, with, um, with you today, come along. Uh, we're doing three dates coming up in May, June, July. So Tuesday, May 31st, Wednesday, June the 1st, or Friday, July the 15th. I only just added this last week because one of my buddies wrote to me and said, that's half term. <laughs> Which means nothing to me because I have a toddler, but if you're a parent of school age kids, it matters apparently. So, um, so that's your non-half term date there. Normally, we, uh, the tuition to this is 167 pounds, but because we're here and I put a special together for Chris. Um, I'm going to include a couple of goodies for you guys. This is some training to start on straight away, right? Um, some, one thing I haven't had a lot of time to talk about today is overcoming fears. I hope I've allayed some fears by saying you don't have to be perfect and, and all the rest of it. But um, the first one is my ultimate confidence pack. This is a three audio pack that helps you to, uh, first of all, understand where fears of public speaking and selling come from. How many of you have fears around public speaking? Any of you? Who's got fears around selling? Any of you feel Nikki? Yeah, right. So, <laughs> right? Same thing, right? Um, so, uh, so if you've got fears around that sort of stuff, where do they come from? And there's a, a release process there, a meditation that helps you to let go of them. And there's my visual rehearsal every time before I go on stage. So three CDs, three audio, audios, MP3s. 
Um, also my client appreciation night system, which um, my Bulgarian wine guy did. So how to start really quickly with a business in speaking, really simple thing, even if you've got a small database or very few clients yet. And then also how to turn PowerPoint into profit and avoid death by PowerPoint. So that's a little training pack, which, um, which I'll include for anyone who registers while you're here tonight, right? Uh, and we've got a really cool special for you. If you were to go to my website right now and buy a ticket for this, you'd be pleasantly dis surprised to see that you could have an early bird discount of 47 pounds. Mm -hmm. Special for tonight only, and not even my own clients are getting this, but I thought I'd put it together for you guys, is when you buy a ticket to come along to any one of those three dates, I'm gonna be, you can bring along a friend for free. I have one condition, not someone in this room. Right, you guys see the value of it, you can buy your own damn ticket. It's already a steal, 47 pounds for a full day, right? However, you might know someone whom this is going to be really important for them with the direction or the journey that they're on. We have people who are, you know, managers in, in corporate and all sorts of things come along, come along for this. It's not just business owners. So you might know someone who might be intrigued to spend, to spend a day with you. So you could bring along a friend for free. Only when you register tonight though, it's the only way we have to track that. So um, Angela is at the back. This is my lovely Angela. And she's going to be outside those doors. We're going to take a 10 minute break, I think, before we do our breakaway sessions. Is that right? Yeah. So we're going to be out there for 10 minutes, getting you guys registered for this if you would like to come and join. Just 47 pounds, stick it on a credit card and we can get you sorted. If you've got questions, come and ask me afterwards. Oh, the dates, I beg your pardon. So there's the, there's the dates for you. Um, so we'll be out there 10 minutes and then Chris will sh tell us where we're going for... Yeah. Breakaway sessions? Yeah, Fab, excellent. Thank you very much, team. I'll be out the back for questions. Thank you.